Agent 47 and Diana Burnwood are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. Unknowingly, they have been hired by a shadow client to target a number of operatives of Providence, a secret organization working in the highest echelons of power. Providence's controller, the Constant, approaches Diana and makes her a deal. Eliminate the shadow client and learn about 47's past. But when 47 discovers that the shadow client is Lucas Gray, his lost childhood friend, he and Diana switch sides to fulfill an old pact. Destroy Providence. Together, they manage to capture the Constant, forcing him to reveal the identities of the three Providence partners. Eliminate them, and the war would be over. However, the Constant has an ace up his sleeve. Best laid. Look closer. In the shadows. Behind the everyday world. Beyond the headlines and the seats of power. A hidden hand. Welcome to Dubai, 47. Today is the inauguration of the Scepter, and the ceremony is well underway. You will find Marcus Stuyvesant near the building's signature art installation. While a paranoid Carl Ingram has ensconced himself in his penthouse suite, security on highest alert. Mr. Gray is already in position and ready to assist. Good luck, 47. 47. Come in. 47, do you copy? I'm here. Are you in position? I'm heading towards the point of entry. Good. Get back to me when you're there. Use your camera and scan the lock, will you? I think I can override the window's controls from here. I'm in position. 47, the inauguration is taking place close by. Once you've infiltrated it, get your bearings, I'm sure there must be floor plans somewhere. Understood. We need absolute focus on this one. If Ingram and Stuyvesant are alerted to our presence, we may lose them for good. We are so close, 47. Don't worry. They're not going anywhere. Welcome to the Baj Al Ghazali. Welcome! Welcome. Hello! Good to see you. Feels How free. lovely to see so many friendly and familiar faces here today. And this has been a dream of mine for a great many years. And as all of you I've been personally invited by the Royal Highness Omar Al Ghazali. I should have clearance. The name is Zaina Kazi. Like Sir, I understand. But you can't enter without being searched. It's standard procedure. This is ridiculous. Well, that's how it is. Think about it and come back if you want. I'll be waiting upstairs in the reception. Zana Kazim, aka the Vulture. One of the top agents working for Crystal Dawn, the Pan African terrorist organization. I almost hired him myself once, but chose the Maelstrom instead. Now, what is his business here? Understood. Crystal. I 
That was a big waste of time. Crystal Dawn won't be happy. <coughs> Excuse me. Can you please extinguish that cigarette? You are blowing <coughs> cancer directly into my body. It's a smoking area. If you don't like it, piss off. Jesus, I'm just asking nicely. No, you were being a bitch. Now go away and binge eat some celery or whatever idiots like you do. Or do something worse than blowing cancer in your face. God, what is your problem? <coughs> you are sick. You have no idea. Greetings, sir. I just need to do a quick routine check if you want to get through. Nothing to worry about. It's simple protocol, sir. Okay, let's go, sir. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Kazim. I'm glad you changed your mind. Arrogance can be a dangerous trait. Yes, indeed, it can. Mr. Ingram has been expecting you. We have a conference room set up for you. Hello, sir. Please, go in and make yourself comfortable. Mr. Ingram will be with you shortly. Thank you. Mr. Kazim, a pleasure to meet you. Omar tells me great things about you. I'll get straight to the point. I have a, well, let's call it a dispute, which the Royal Highness tells me you're very capable of taking care of. 
Now, I've worked with your organization before, in Morocco, I believe, so I'm a little hesitant. Don't be. We do what's needed. Well, only time will tell. I have two assignments for you. Take care of the first one, and then we can discuss the bigger fish. Now, on to the first. An acute problem has been brought to my attention. Keep talking. I'll be candid with you. No one is supposed to know that I'm here. However, there's a journalist down at the inauguration, and he's asking rather intrusive questions about who's staying up here, and that is a very dangerous problem for me. Now, I want you to silence this little pain. You think you can do that? It's what I do best. I like your bluntness. This is his file. Hans looked. Pulitzer winning freelance journalist. He's good. And won't give up until he gets the answers he needs. And that can't happen. Consider it done. Good man. And remember, I want a picture. I want proof so I can sleep tonight. Of course. Once this little assignment is completed, come back and talk to Miss Toe. Then we can discuss the real cancer that needs to be removed. I'm sure you can see yourself out. Right there. <laughs> Mr. Look, I hear you're looking for information. Oh, really? Okay. You know what's happening upstairs? I know more than you could imagine. But we can't talk here. Follow me. Great. Lead the way. Yes, that's it. Now Ingram trusts you, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. How you doing? Sir, this is a restricted area. Mr. Kazim, welcome back. So, you have the picture?
Yes, here. Good. Our guest will be delighted. Please follow me. He's waiting. Mr. Kazim, please, follow me. Long time no see. Have you seen the view yet? It's quite spectacular. On a clear day, you get a wonderful view of the Arabian Desert. It's a sight to behold, the vastness of it. Back in China, this would never be possible, because of all the smog. I just feel like there should be a better way. We should take care of people better than them. This from so, Mikhail calls me pretentious for like about the, the oranges in my coffee. This has been His Royal Highness's dream. I think for even longer than I have known him. Everything here is completely self-sufficient. Electricity, internet, even water is cleaned and reused. It's the first of its kind on this scale. It was important for him to look to the future. Mr. Ingram is expecting you. Mr. Cassie, so good to see you. Do you have the picture? Yes. Your problem is fixed. Huh. Omar said you were good. Let's get down to the important business at hand. Okay, people, clear the room. I need to discuss some delicate business with Mr. Kazim. Oh, sorry. We have Excuse Ingram right where we want him. Just remembered something. 47, you know what to do. Have a drink, see the view. It's something to behold. be a problem. Either way, you have no choice in the matter. It's interesting we haven't come across each other before, Mr. Kazim. Well, maybe not. I usually have my people talk to people like you. I can imagine. I don't know how much Omar, I mean, the Royal Highness, has told you. But my guess is very little, so let me get straight to the point. My organization has been hit by an unpleasant cancer that can only be removed by cutting it out of the gut, if you get my drift. Yes, I do. Good. This little turd is spreading his vile, toxic cells, and I want him stopped. Brutally. Chemo won't remove him. Only the knife. I have his file here. Arthur Edwards. A sly little devil, if there ever was one. Me and my associates, well, we underestimated the little worm. We want revenge. I think you and I share a common interest. I doubt that. But I want you to make him suffer. This is not a horse that needs to be put out of its misery. This is a rabid dog that needs to be put down. Am I making myself clear, Mr. Kazim? Yes. Consider it done. Good. We're now in business. We are. I'll have Miss Toe send you anything you need. We're done here. Oh, uh, one last question. I'm just curious. You're nicknamed the Vulture. 
Why? I find it's best to wait for the perfect kill. I think you'll be perfect for the job. Nice to meet you, Mr. Kazim. I look forward to receiving an update. Safe hunting. Guard. Yes, Mr. Ingram? Please show Mr. Kazim out. Yes, sir. Mr. Kazim, please follow me. So you're saying the Medici's were just polluting generations of talent that would have flourished more with them? Just one Carl Ingram finally gets what he deserves. Good riddance. Now let's get Marcus Stuyvesant. Good today, sir. Oh, come on, I hate clingy artists. Hello, sir. Yeah, I'll leave a tip next time.
We got him, 47. Soon there will be no more Providence. You need to find an exit. Our business is done here, but it's far from over. That's your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose. We underestimated the Constant. Yeah, he's a glorified desk clerk. He's not just after the money. He wants it all. We caught him once. We can do it again. And... Well, we're not the ones who let him escape. You still don't trust her. I don't like executive decision makers. Look. You don't have to follow her, you know? Soon, this will be over. Maybe it's time to think about the future. You have to face the possibility that there's no going back. If the ICA knows what you did... She'll make it right. She always does. We have a fix on Carlisle. Come on. We've got a plane to catch. I hope you like the rain, 47. Miss Burnwood. How did you... I have everyone's number. You really ought to know by now. You planned this. All of it. Don't be silly. I just played the hand I was dealt. We'll find you. You had me. Where'd that get you? We handed you an empire. It's for the best. The partners were complacent, set in their ways. But power is more than just security. Providence can be an agent of change. Surely you understand. Or you will. Soon enough. She came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, and you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlisle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlisle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlisle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlisle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. A 
It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlyle keeps a case file on the Constant. Information that may be helpful in his recapture. So don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor. The Carlyle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlyle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlyle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlyle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlyle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take his place, it may be an opportunity to get close to Madame Carlyle. Your body and see what that was all about, would you? Somebody! Mr. Whitmer, thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Yes, please. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and, and all this security. I've never seen the place guarded like this, and, and, and I dare say I don't like it at all. This is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. Oh, I could just cry. Cry. I will have to search you if you're passing through here, sir. Funny. My mother always said I had good hands, so I should have been a surgeon. Please move on in an orderly fashion. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madame Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? 
Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. All right there. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity.
I'm sure there's more to find in Zachary's room. secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photo... copy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. Hey, Ron, did Yates mention anything about the Carlisle account? Yes, I'm in England now. It's all gone. Ron and I haven't been briefed about shit. What the fuck do I say to Carlisle? I feel complete. What is it, Fernsby? Mr. Edward is not coping too well with the situation, I'm afraid. Oh, he is a useless wimp. 
If it's not one thing, it's another. If I may say so, these are challenging circumstances for everyone. His role in the stage funeral event tomorrow that weighs on him. Christ. Did he just grow up here? I believe he is calling his ex-wife again. It could end with legal consequences. The harassment charges from hard time. Good idea. That American lawyer in the, the small office, did you check his travel documents? Everything's in order. Right? Shootouts A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Looking good today, sir. Sorry, sir. I can't let you through, okay? Please leave the area. who my grandmother is, was, right? Just relax. It'll be fine. You'll get your returns. Don't worry. Give Anthony a call, okay? Patrick Carlisle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. 
I don't have to worry about the inbreedings her customary in these circles. So, is that it? Did you see anything suspicious last night? Nah. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Is that all? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else you want to know? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, uh, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my... Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Greetings, sir. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the Stag's Head around half past eight. If that's all? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? 
His plants, mother, and the staff were all the company he had. Anything else I can do to help? Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I, I can't breathe. Excuse me. You always led by example rather than by words and meaningless gestures. How are you today, sir? Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book. Which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is there anything else you want to... Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. A safe in Madame Carlyle's office. I bet that's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards.
How are you, sir? Hmm. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmire, you have enough evidence to present Just your case calm. for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. Like, um, reading? You look really smart, in a good way, I mean. I do like reading. Really? I like reading too. I read all the time, literature and, and such. That's nice. Yeah. Romantic to work that closely with I Mr. Actually, Fernsby, my yeah, I actually, all right, later. later. Uh, 
Who am I kidding? He's probably not looking for anything serious. Madam Carlyle. Mr. Whitmer, you found proof of what happened to my brother? No, not yet. Go and see Fernsby when you do. No need to panic. Gregory handling his wound, causing trouble. Thing we did was for nothing. To protect the Carlyle legacy, what bollocks. It's all gone, I fear. That bloody Arthur Edwards, how did I not see it? <laughs> I doubt our big brother could have botched it up any worse than I have, even if he'd tried.
Hello, sir. Hey, Rebecca. Do you see this about old Wompy? Painkiller. Lethal, if you use enough of them. But no not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? Hello there, sir. Let's talk about real family affairs. How's it going? Interesting stories. Sorry, Sorry, but I think uh, I. Right. Yeah, what did you say? I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. Sir. Do you know if any new staff? This is Madame Carlyle's office. Um, Please to step Burnsby. inside. He's in charge of the staff. Can't be too careful. Part of the job. I can't forget his eyes. They were so swollen. It didn't even look like Zachary. I've never seen it so well. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead.
The butler, Mr. Fernsby, killed Zachary. Fernsby? Oh, you've got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the most loyal man I have ever met. I found pills in his office that matches the poison that killed your brother. Furthermore, I found Zachary's notebook, half burned, in Mr. Fernsby's fireplace. It showed that Zachary intended to publish a written confession to a murder the two of you committed nearly 50 years ago. The murder of your older brother, Montgomery. That's outrageous. We did no such thing. No need to feign innocence. I know a killer when I see one, and my discretion is assured. The papers also described how Mr. Fernsby helped you stage the murder of Montgomery as an accident. I believe he killed Zachary not to be exposed as an accomplice to murder. Sweet Fernsby. Hmm. You are wrong, Mr. Whitmer. He did not do it to protect himself. He did it to protect the Carlisle legacy. Mr. Fernsby, like myself, understands that sacrifices must be made to secure stability and prosperity. Mr. Whitmer, I'd appreciate it if your findings never leave this room. I understand Fernsby's actions, and there is no need for them to have more consequences than they already have. Fernsby was very fond of Zachary, and I am sure his decision will haunt him to the day he dies. About your reward, have you considered an amount? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Arthur Edwards? The constant? That must mean you're... Oh. <gasps> I expected you'd show up. But you're not here to kill me. If you were, you would have already. The enemy of my enemy, I suppose. You can have it. You earned it. The file you want is in the safe. Good hunting. I need some privacy. Thank you. Oh, dear. Sorry, Hello, sir. Hello, sir. You dropped something? I need some privacy. Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Alexa Carlyle again. Don, this is how the land lies. Your law firm is deeply involved in this farce, and I demand that you personally... Mission complete. Well done, 47. Hi there. Seven. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Shit! 